Hello to you, Dr. Itzhak Drimer. Hello. A series of conversations towards the publishing of the new coming book and the new coming course about the ultimate medicine. If you would share your story, what is the uniqueness of your story to enable us to understand what is the ultimate medicine? Tell us a bit about your story. Sometimes people come into understandings by education. Sometimes they come into understandings by experiences. Sometimes they are combining the two. I combine the two. So when I was a, a little child, four years old, I went through a very traumatic event where I swallowed a seed of sunflower, a sunflower seed that wasn't roasted because I was eating it. Somebody mm -hmm. gave it to me, which was maybe a mistake, maybe not. Now we can say that not. Exactly. So now we can say it not, but when you look at the packages today, they say that uh, above a certain age, you're not allowed to eat them. So when that happened to me, and I was choking, and I was taken to the hospital, and I was like four years old, and it was very long time ago. Mm -hmm. So the hospital and the, and the procedures weren't as they are today, so all they could have done with me is just wait, see, wait and see. And, but I started developing, I became sicker and sicker all the time. I couldn't breathe, I had a lot of asthma attacks, a lot of pneumonias, constantly pneumon pneumonias, four year old. After a while they understood something is really wrong with me and they took me and they x-rayed me and they saw, they saw that, that that little seed germinated in my left lung. So it germinated and started being like cancer because it took over some part of the lung and it was life endangering actually. So then they decided, I think for the first time in that certain hospital in Israel, and the, at that time were only a few, they decided to operate on me. And they didn't know if I'm going to make it or not. Wow. So before the operation, I was in the hospital for a very long time. And I was alone most of the time because my parents couldn't be there. It was far away from where we live. There were not hardly any buses at that time. We're not talking about cars. So I had to spend a lot of time in this hospital alone as a five-year-old then. And until the operation. And then after the operation, which I survived somehow, Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I had to spend uh, more time after that for a lot of examinations, so I stayed in the hospital for a long time on my own again. What would be the most profound memory from those, those days, the, the surgery, the operation, being alone? I, w what I did, I, I, create, I made that hospital my home. The nurses and the doctors were like my family there. The patients, I knew the patients. And when I was going to the surgery, a few people walked with me. I remember that as a child. And they say you're going to have some tonsillitis in that time, which of course wasn't. And I remember how they took me to, it was external, uh, you were walking the streets of the hospital. It wasn't one, one section. And when I woke up, I was hooked to all these machines. And I didn't understand what's happening. To make short, long story short, in that I survived that, and then spending time in the hospital gave me, for today, gave me a different perspective about being a patient and seeing the doctors and the nurses. So, all my life, actually, I was directed to this type of understandings, or I was attracted to the notion of medicine. And in the end, I went to study that type of craft or profession to become a, a doctor of a type of, in health providing. So that's actually the base for me to become one. But yet, it was the base of becoming a therapist. Uh, and, but give me the link to the ultimate medicine. So when you, it's, this is a very good point, so I went through three types of medicine. I went through veterinary medicine and I realized loving the animals, that's not going to do it. I went to conventional medicine 
And after four years, I understood that, that the concept is not enough. So, so I went to chiropractic medicine. And the concept was the closest ones, closest one to more, let's put it this way, holistic view of medicine and human beings. Mm -hmm. Even then wasn't enough for me. And then I decided that if you don't see the psychology, the psyche of the patient, mm -hmm. if you don't see what is eating at home at work, what is, what is his habits with chemistry, with biochemistry, food, drinks, if you don't see his, if you don't understand his spine, which is a very important portion of our health because that's a, the communication between our brain and our body goes through the spinal cord, through the spinal column. If you have the interference there, you're going to pass information wrongly going down and going back. So it's a must by understanding what it is. If you don't understand energy, from the quantum mechanics of understanding the, the, the hidden information of us, being part of the quantum field, you cannot become an all-rounded doctor. You can become a treater in one of these things that I just said, mm -hmm. either psychology, psychiatrist, or chiropractor, or medical doctor alone, or energy worker, or biochemist, is not enough. If you don't combine them all and see the perspective from each one of them, and go to your patient and see from which one of these is coming to his illness, sickness, and his dismay, fears, depression. If you don't understand that, you can help them only very little. And they'll repeat and repeat and repeat their illness or pain. That brought me to understand and develop that world that we call ultimate medicine. And the... When you're dealing with ultimate medicine, and you're seeing in your uh, center of ultimate medicine many obstacles, so when you're approaching an obstacle, what would be your golden advice or your golden story? So an obstacle is in the eye of the beholder. And from your perspective? So, in my perspective, every obstacle is a pedestal. It's an option for a pedestal. If you don't understand that in, in everything in life, and especially with your health, being sick, ill, afraid, depressed, and in, with anxiety, <clears throat> these are only uh, things that mirroring yourself as with your, all your wrongs all with your problems, internal problems. So they are becoming out with sickness, illness, pain, fear, depression. Overweight, underweight. These are all expressions. So when you are looking at a person, anything that is illness is an obstacle, you show him that it's a pedestal to take him to its next level of being. The next level. Give me an example in your uh, life that you used it, this uh, pedestal obstacle method. I am an orphan since the age of 10. I lost my mother when, she was when I was 13, but from the age of 10 she was already gone. So I, and I was the eldest one in my family, I have four, five, uh, four siblings. So instead of caving down with that loss of my mother and become a criminal, which it was very easy in my neighborhood, and um, drop out of school. I did exactly the opposite. I, a lead I became a leader in my neighborhood when I was a child and I had groups of kids. Wherever I went, and then later I went to a um, boarding school. Not easy boarding school to be in. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't, I, I, I used my abilities to be a part of leading there instead of being led. And then I went to the military, I did the same thing. Everywhere I went, I created 
that missing link in my life, my mother or a power or a way to uh, escort you as a child, to grow out of it, to grow bigger and stronger, lead my brothers and my sisters with me, and then lead my friends, and then lead my patients to their abilities from their dismay, pain, sickness, fears, and anxiety. People that are seeing this episode, known to be part of the community of the readers of the book, will come to the uh, Dreamers Ultimate Medicine Center. Just leave the details, click, and send their cell phones, emails, and be part of the community of Dr. Dreamer. Sure. Thank you very much. Thank you.